Morning everyone, happy Monday. Uh, this week we're going to do a series on movement and today's component we're going to work on is the split step. The split step helps you not only to generate speed but it promotes um, you know, fluency and rhythm with your movement, timing with your, with, with your shot. Uh, it also allows you to become a lot more economic with your movement so therefore being able to move well or to conserve energy to play for a long period of time should you need to do so. Uh, it, to be honest as well if you're, if you're economic with your movement you're probably going to feel a lot less stiff and sore the next day. So uh, woohoo! Lots of, lots of great reasons why the split step is, is important. So what the split step is, it's a, it's a movement, it's a motion, it's an energy. So where if, if I'm here and I'm going to move to the front uh, left corner, okay, so I'm going to move my left foot back a little bit to accelerate forward. And what that does as well is, by doing that, it allows me to decelerate as I play the shot. And again, if you watch that, here. I like to break the movement up into three phases. Phase one is a split step. Phase two is your approach to the ball, your movement, your line to the ball. And phase three then is your final step slash lunge uh, on the shot. And if your split step is good, well then that means your approach to the ball, you don't have to accelerate because you've already generated uh, the acceleration through your split step. And so therefore, you afford yourself the luxury of deselling on the final step and then playing the shot. And if you think about it, if you're deselling, you're not slamming the brakes, okay? So it's not like, and then playing the shot. Okay, you're deselling, you're in total control of your body, making it far easier to execute the shot and to place the ball in the area that you're looking to play it in with comfort and ease. It also, by decelerating in that final motion, you will have a sense of awareness of where your opponent may be. Okay, so in other words, if um, a sneaky bush comes up into the front corner, they don't cover it, you know, by moving in, you'll, you'll be aware of that because you're slowing down, your, your senses are, are, in, are increased, and then you can just comfortably play a drop without feeling too edgy, play it and sort of come back out again. And you just, you can keep them honest. And if they can't cover the space, happy days. It's like a simple winner. Um, so it really helps with your shot selection. So what we're gonna do through here, um, we're gonna do a couple of drills in a second, but we're just gonna do some, um, some practice runs. Okay, and as we use as we do the practice runs, I want you to really think about using your feet as platforms to push, to propel you to the area of the court that you're looking to move to. Okay, and sort of visualize this as you go along. Got a racket, I think if I use a full size, I might, you know, take a chunk out of the wall. And um, so here we go. And if you're in the same boat, you can pick up anything and you don't even have to pick up something. You can just use your hand through here. Okay, right. So the first one, what I want you to, to really sort of just get yourself centered. We want to stand nice and tall through here. Right? We don't want to be in this position here. We don't want to be engaged because now we can't drop and create the energy required to, uh, to, to, to start off the split step. It also, in this position here, you, you sort of feel yourself, your, your, your quads are engaged. Okay, that's, I mean, that's going to fatigue them if nothing else. Okay, just so nice and tall, nice and relaxed. Okay, almost like you're a puppet with a piece of string on the top, and then when you take off in the split step, it's like the string has been cut. Okay, so again, what that looks like through here, nice and tall, relaxed. Boom, all right. So what we'll do, the, the sequence here, as we practice this, uh, we're gonna go, uh, the speed of the movement, we're gonna go one, two, three. All right, a real simple drill here, okay? One, two, three. So. But well, that basically, what we want to do when we move, we don't want to go one, two, three, because one, two, three basically means the two, three being the last two steps, we're going to, and then, you know, we're kind of rushing uh, onto the ball in that last step when we don't necessarily need to. If it could be the other way, one, two, three. And it's nice and simple through there. One, two, three. Okay, and again, one, two, three. Good stuff. One, two, three. Now, which is noticed through here, is that if I'm moving to this area, this foot is coming back a little bit, it's a little motion, and it's pushing, okay, forward, okay? And it's like, one, two, three, okay? And when I move in this direction, this foot then 
starts it comes back a little bit and two three now watch that again bring the leg back one two three okay now but you can use that obviously side to side okay and it's if i'm going this way this foot is going to kick off and it's like one two three okay and the same on this way this foot pardon me this foot is going to kick back one two three and then the last one is in those back corners and we're, we're, we are literally just keeping this like refined as one step sorry like one step one meter radius of the t and now the only difference when you go backwards you do the same thing but you must turn your hips at the same time simultaneously so how that looks through here is like it's like one two okay so it's like one two three okay one two and you notice the way as i do that as i bring my left foot forward just a fraction i'm getting that little rotation and in the same way on this side it's like one two three and then coming back up okay so again think about as we do these drills and we're going to do some little ghosting patterns through here and um, but it's all about this first step this is not necessarily going to be a physical exercise we really want this first step to be nailed down okay um, and yeah okay so let's just go through here so if you have space and you can put like little targets around where you'd like to swing over uh, happy days if you don't no drums it's all good the first one we're going to do we're just going to focus on moving forward okay and again through here so it's one two three there we go back to middle backhand three that's it again good job that's it i like that nice and tall on the t and tall boom there we go good now a little breather there one thing i do want you to notice uh that as i do this i'm also synchronizing my preparation my take back so i, I sort of generally i'm an advocate but you know people have different things but of kind of keeping your racket around hip height so it doesn't have to be up here it's not really and it doesn't have to be like over on one side more than the other not for me anyways so i like to just keep it if i'm i'm right-handed uh, it might come out left because of the camera whatever but uh i like to just keep it my right hand my racket by my right hip give or take okay and then if i'm moving in this direction into my forehand there you can see my racket straight up let's see if i can do that with slightly better visual okay so i'm on the t by there and so if you think about it my preparation is pretty good there i've got all the options in the world as i go in and this is before i've made that step and it's like step and hit in quick succession okay and it's the same backhand step and i'm in that position you can see my racket's in a really good position through there and again i've got lots of options and think about in a game situation when you're deselling you know into the front corner your awareness you're, you're laughing and you can you can envision all the great players or any any player to be honest that if they're moving into the corner imagine yourself moving into the front corners with good racket preparation nice and controlled and slow with the body your weight between your hips if that ball is a little bit away from the side wall, there's not one shot you can't play and even better still by having that bit of time you can then be a little bit deception you can draw them forward and then hit them back okay all right so um, let's get back okay so let's start let's go again so we're going to go side to side we've gone forward forward now we're going to go side to side okay and remember use the leg opposite so if you're going to move in that direction to the right your left leg is going to kick out okay and again so here we go Boom. and it's an energy nice and tall and relaxed there we go and again yes yeah, good good movement and it's actually probably easier with the camera to see me push off that foot okay and again boom, boom. three one two three imagine it's a volley one two three one, two, three. Good job. Three. And 
we can mix it up here. We can go open stance here with things. So let's do that. So now we're going to go open stance. So if you're forehand, you're going to use your right leg if you're right-handed, left leg if you're left-handed, and for your backhand, you're going to go left leg if you're right-handed, and right leg if you're left-handed. Okay, so, and, but it's the same. So you're going to use this leg to push out. Boom, boom. There. And still notice my rack is coming up each time. There we go. And as my racket's coming up, I'm making sure I get my shoulders in a good, a good position. They're facing the sidewall, even though I'm on that open leg. So I'm actually getting some good reps for my, my, my racket here as well. Keep going, a few more. And again, really massive emphasis on that split. Okay. Good. A little breather. That's good. With some nice repetitions. Now, uh, we are going to do the, the back two corners here. And again, it's just one step. Okay. And remember the important part of this one. Um, and the extra little thing to sort of uh, to think about is to get the hips turning as you, as you create the motion. Okay. So, through there. So really making sure you get those hips round as you take off, as you use the split step, as you use your foot as a platform to propel yourself into that corner. Now we're going to go conventional leg through here, whatever that means. So we just go like left leg on the forehand, right leg on the back. And actually that's what conventional leg means, I suppose. Um, again, I'm, I'm a, I am a huge, and we will do some open stuff through here, but I just want to do this one first and then we will, we will go open leg. Okay. So again, Nice and tall and relaxed. Again, there's so many reasons why we do not want to be like that. Okay, that's. I mean, how often can you hold that? How long can you hold that for? Think about wall sits that you've done in the past when your coaches have asked you to do it. Yeah. Right. So here we go. Uh, back to there. I've got a little ball. And I'm going to look to hit over that. Split step. Turn. Swing. And back up. Split step. Turn. And again, watch this leg. Watch this leg. Forward. And you can hear the sound as I hit it. And the taller you are on the tee, not genetically, the taller you are on the tee, the more energy you can produce to drop down. Okay? And if you think about it, you're there, you can really sort of drop into it um, as quickly as and, and generate more force, which then can propel you quicker should you need to. If you're on the back foot, and somebody's hit an absolute cork of a ball to the front of the court, you, you can get that, okay? <clears throat> and one thing we didn't talk about, uh, we've gone a lot through like the rhythm in the sense that it's like dropping into split step and then your ability to then decel on the last movement is that if somebody hits a great shot, you can, if you've taken off and you need to continue that acceleration to get a racket on the ball, to hang in and to stay in the rally, you can totally do that. Okay, so um, it does, uh, it can allow you to cover the court faster when you're under, under pressure. Okay, right, here we go again. We're going to go conventional leg, we're going to do 10 corners to here, nice and steady. She goes, and again, massive emphasis when you're going to this back right corner to push off that left, get the hips turned, and the same thing, pushing off that right and get the hips turned as you go to that back left. Okay, here we go for 10. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. Couple more. Three. Last one. All right, good job. Okay, really good movement. Now we're gonna go the same and we're gonna go open stance, okay? So we're gonna go to the back end. Same with the hip rotation. You don't have to move your hips as much here because you're playing off that open leg. So it's not like your leg is crossing over. Um, so that's always good. And we will actually get more into that uh, later in the week. But for now, let's just focus on this uh, and nail this part. This is huge. This can be the catalyst for you to be 
go from being an okay mover to a very, very good mover. And don't get it mixed up. Some people think a good mover is somebody that can cover the court really well, is fast and really fit. And don't get me wrong, that certainly helps, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're a good mover. That just means you cover the court well. A good mover for me is somebody that can get to the ball, use as little energy as possible, and have as many options at the disposal, and have easy access um, to play the ball in a variety of different places. That to me is somebody who's a good mover. Um, and there's so many players that sort of spring to mind. The most obvious uh, from you know eras just gone by would be people like Jan Khan, uh, Austin Alaraga, and um, then you go to the next sort of generation. You actually have Alex Goff was a really good mover. Uh, Peter Nickel was an amazing mover. Um, Amar Shabana, like class. And then today, I suppose movers that you know are, are really really good is certainly from a an economic point of view, and make the game look easy would be of a similar cloth in the modern era, would be, or today's era rather, uh, Kareem Abdel Gawad and uh, Ali Farai. You know, they always they make it look so effortless. Okay, I'm jibber jabber, here we go again. Open stance through here, okay? So pushing off this leg, playing off here, okay? And it's like one, two, shuffle, boom. And notice again, my racket is, is, is still coming up. Two. That's it, get that split step. There we go, a couple more. That's it, keep focusing on that split step. Don't let it drop by the wayside, okay? Because this is our primary focus through here. And all the other good stuff that you're doing, we will get to in due course in the week. Couple more. Push off that leg. Good. That's it. Nice and tall. Relax. Push off. Good. Nice and tall. Relax. Push off. All right. Cool. All right. Now we're going to go random, and so I want you to carbon copy me. Um, and we're going to do a, a couple of sets of this, and we'll do sets of sort of ten or twelve, give or take, a little breather. So basically, if I go front forehand, you go front forehand. If I go across forehand. You go across forehand, back, backhand, and you get you get the drift. And let's just use forehand and backhand as opposed to what corner. So if you're a lefty or righty, doesn't matter, just go. If I go from forehand, you go from forehand. Okay, you ready? Nice and tall and relax. Here we go. From forehand. Front backhand. Front backhand. Front backhand. Volley backhand open. Back backhand open. Back forehand open. Back forehand convention. Back forehand convention. Front four backhand. Oops. Volley forehand. Volley forehand. Front forehand. Press there. Good job. Uh, let's go. And again in three, two, one, open back and back. It's a lot of language to don't worry about that. Back hand. Back and volley. Try to visualize the shot as you go through here. But again, that split step is everything through here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, two, three. I'm starting to speed up just a little bit and breathe it there. Okay, now you're just going to copy it through. I want you to really visualize the shot uh, as we play through here. As we're kind of hopefully, I mean, we've gone through a very conscious state of mind where we focus on using our foot as a platform as platforms rather, uh, we've focused on the split step now, as a conscious way. Now let's see if we can have it like semi-automatic where we're thinking of it, but we're also looking to try to play some All right, here we go. Here we go.
and say keep going. One, two, three. 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 And rest there. Good job. The lungs going a little bit more than I would have thought. Okay, and again, here we go. Visualize, visualize. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good job. One, two, three. 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 Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, three. Sit. Yeah, what a drop shot. Okay, good stuff. A couple more through here, guys. Okay, you're doing great. That's it guys, keep going, keep going, last few. I've stopped visualizing, I'm just more keeping an eye on you. Yay. That's it, one, two, three. One, two, three. Total control on that last step, every time. Good job guys, keep going. That's it, the energy from the middle of the court Nice and tall, relax, boom, boom. Well done, good job. Couple more, okay? Roll up them sleeves. It's good, really good guys. Just a couple more to go through here and again, seeing if we can, you know, obviously be in total control of our bodies. And so we're really, obviously that primary focus today is on that split step. And without further ado, here we go. That's it, good job. That's it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. Uh, breathe it there. One last point that I didn't really, t uh, I didn't mention, was that your T stance, your stance on the T. So you never really want your feet, and if you notice through here, as I'm doing it, and hopefully you're doing it as well, we're not standing on the T like this, okay? And though it might feel like, yeah, you can reach, if your feet are extended, your weight goes beyond your hips, you're in big trouble for balance purposes, which then leads to quality of shot, which then leads to you know, issues with efficiency and economy and all that good stuff. So just making sure your, your feet are always kind of like shoulder width apart, give or take. And so what that does allow you to do is that you can shift your body weight really, really quickly. And even if you've made a wrong movement, you can still, or re, uh, misread a shot, you can change direction very, very quickly. Okay, so it allows you to be naturally more agile. You will never see somebody on a tee like this, come into there and then try, Get this ball back it just doesn't work like that and then even if you think about the energy you're trying to get back to there okay here we go one two three that's it and that last step signifies triggers the start of the swing and then that weight gets transferred naturally into the shot without even thinking of it One, two, three. Watch my T position. One, two, three. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, little hole and flick. One, two. And rest there. You can see to there now I'm starting to bring in a little variation, a little hold, boom, snap. Okay, and you can be creative through here as you do this, okay? I just want to do one more, and I think that's probably plenty, and by all means, if you guys want to do more, please do. Okay, you ready? Here goes. Whoa, did you see that? Good job, last couple guys. That's it. Boom. Think. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can say it out loud if you like. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three. One, two, three. Two, three. Boss comes in. Straight drive, flick. Cross court, Nick. Yeah. Um, I think that that's plenty for now. And by all means, you want to do an extra couple of sets too. And just, if you are going to do so, keep the focus primarily on here, on your split step and that takeoff. Um, because it really, really is important. And you know, I know we said it before and you've probably heard it a lot. This could be a great time to develop that because it doesn't come naturally to everyone. It doesn't come easily to everyone. The split step is a, is, it's a skill in itself. And so sort of looking to develop that and really install that into your muscle memory. It could be, if you do nothing else over this period of time for however long, hopefully not too much longer, that's huge. I, I, I promise you. I, uh, Okay, well, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for tuning in. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. And remember, one, two.